Alibaba have recently released a new bunch of WAN video models, with a new control model being the focus of today's video, which basically gives you control nets for WAN. How much VRAM do you need? Well, with the smallest 1.3B model being just 3 gig, the answer is not very much at all. However much VRAM you do have, there's an option for you, as mere moments after the official model release, the amazing Kijai and City96 have given us a whole range to pick from, even down to just 6 gig for the Q2 version of the 14B model. Uh, do let me know how well that one works. Speeds are much the same as the original models I've already covered, so let's take a look at some of the new things you can do with these WAN control models. To gain control, we have just one brand new node needed, the WAN Fun Control to Video one. This comes built into Comfy UI, as you can tell from its little fox icon, so nothing extra to install. Do make sure your Comfy is fully up to date though, as it was only added fairly recently. This is the version I'm using here, shown in Manager. Let's take a quick shifty at this new node now. Unlike typical control net nodes you might have seen before, this time we have no way to select the type or even the strength, so it looks like we're going in on full power only. As for what it supports, the model card has some information about the types of control images we can use, such as canny and depth, but unfortunately doesn't have a complete and specific list. I've tested a few and segmentation for example works fine, but normal maps not so much. Very disappointing considering how normal I am. Anyway, back to the node. Now we all know about what we can put into that control video input, namely a bunch of frames from a video in any one of those supported types. The optional start image input is for if you want the first frame of your video to look like a specific image. Yes, even in the smaller 1.3b model, you can now have image to video. The vision input, though technically optional, really does need to be used as the generations are just pants without it. The following examples would give you an idea of its power. All of the other inputs you should be familiar with as they're in the comfy WAN example. This particular workflow viewers of my WAN LoRa video will already recognize as well. Right, let's get into some of the things you can do. Loading the models is just the same as before, only this time we're loading up one of the WAN fun ones. All the others are staying the same. The beating heart of your control comes in the form of the existing video you decide to use as the input. This being the 480p model, I'm resizing to something appropriate, 832 by 480 in this case, and we'll want to use these frames in various places, so there's a set node to make that easier. Yes, you could just do the resize in the video node, but this one has crop too. Oh, the smallest side is also used as the resolution for the control net processors, so that gets a save as well. There are lots of options for processing those video frames into a control video, and I've put a few down here. So we start off here with depth, then I've got a pose processor, and also an auxiliary processor there as well, just because that has a nice big list of things, so it's great for testing stuff out. Keeping it simple to start with though, I'm just using the pose of the person in the video. In the prompt, you can put whatever you like, and the character you describe will follow the pose provided by your control video. Here, I'm changing the appearance of the woman and even the style of the video too, from realistic into a cartoon. If using a starting image, this would typically also be what you'd use for the vision input, but that isn't your only option. The vision image can have a real impact on your generations, and if you like being weird, uh, I mean normal, like I am, then you can do some fun things with it. For now, I'm using this only vaguely related image of a person in a forest. So putting all that together, can you guess what type of output we'll get? Well, it looks like we've got something that followed our prompt. She's got the long red hair and baggy white sweatshirt. Very nice, like it. Switching now to take a look at the much smaller 1.3b model this time. Everything is the same as before, only the model has changed. And uh, let's take a look at the output this time. This time, instead of following the prompt, it seems the strongest influence is from the vision image. You can see it's taken the flowery pattern of the dress and a number of the other aspects, such as the more realistic style. 
That means for this much smaller model, you're going to need to pay more attention to the image that you're using as your clip vision input, whereas with 14B, that influence isn't as overwhelming, and so you can do much better with prompting. It may be that you want to use multiple control nets, such as both depth and pose, because, well, you'd like to maintain even more information from your input video. In this case, you've got a couple of options. Control sometimes works if you blend types together. For example, here, I've got a video of our hero turning with both the depth and pose estimator combined into a single image. The prompt in this case is for a woman with dark hair and sunglasses in a green and black cloak, hopefully in some sort of futuristic looking alley. And to guide things along just a little bit with this 14B example, I've got something that's a little bit futuristic and there's a person in there as well. We can see here in the preview images that the control video goes in, having both depth and pose, although perhaps the pose does go a little bit funny at times, which is why it can be good to have a look at the previews. The result in this case is, oh, oh, it's got everything mixed up and it's really confused it. As you can see, it seems to have put the skeleton on there thinking it's actually meant to be part of the generation. So ugh, that's not what we want at all, is it? And she's not even turning her head properly. So how can we use depth and pose together or indeed any combination of control net videos? One really simple way is just to use two WAN fun control nodes. Here, the first one gets the pose information and the second one gets the depth information. This time, the result is much better. She turns properly and it doesn't look like our character is covered in tape. Awesome. Uh, apart from that chin, rinse and repeat, of course, if you want to use three or more, as maybe adding something like canny edge would help with that face warp. One thing we haven't done yet, though, is use a starting image, so let's fix that now. Trajectory control is another fun one, and this is an ideal case for using a starting image. The trajectory I've got here is a fairly smooth upward motion and then a slam down, because in this case, we've got our little rodent wizard, and I want him to lift up his staff and slam it down. That's what I've got up in the prompt here as well. The rodent wizard of incredible magical power lifts his staff and then slams it down with extreme force. So hopefully we should get that. This time then there is no vision image and we're not doing any control processing either because that is the control video. The load image, the starting image there is of our rodent and that's also connected to the vision encode. So both the starting image and the vision encode are the same in this case. The get image frames there is going in as the control video because we're not doing any processing. And the result in this case is uh, no, I may not pass. And yes, he does indeed lift his little staff up as I expected and slams it down. Excellent stuff. As you've seen, it's fairly straightforward to pop this node into any of your existing WAN video workflows and gain some control. If you're itching to use the ones from this video, then there's a free version on the GitHub page linked in the video description. For Patreons, you get all the examples shown, a vision model enhanced version, and a cartoon style Laura too. A big thank you to all of you for making this channel possible. With so many different options available, what do you think you'll be creating? Nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. Yeah.